and welcome to part two of our lakes and lederhosen road trip and in this half we'll be focusing on germany and as always if you like what you see then hit subscribe and don't forget to click on that notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos in part one we headed across from calais to molsheim and then down to lake garda before heading up to the austrian border we'll pick up from there by first stopping at augsburg before heading across to Regensburg, stopping at the Dachau Concentration Camp Memorial en route, and then across to Nordlingham via the Nazi Party Rally Grounds and Dinkelsbruch, before heading on to our final destination of Heppenheim via Miltenburg. So as Janice would say, we're back on the roll again. We enter Germany through Austria, just south of the town of Mittenwald. Now the difference between this video and the previous one is there'll be less driving sections because we've got a fair bit to pack in. Anyway, we'll start with a nice driving bit. I just wonder what these little wooden sheds are. I'm intrigued. Do you know? Leave us a comment. And once again, as you move between countries, you just notice subtle little changes. But I have to say, I am really enjoying the route that I've picked. Although it did dawn on me as I was editing this that I could have actually picked up the Romantic Road or Romantikstrasse, which is only a few miles to the east of here. Oh well, one for next time then. This does seem to be a real driver's route though. The landscape is just stunning. And then almost to confirm it, you then come across a group of drivers. A couple of Porsches, another Audi RS, and a Lamborghini convertible. That's pretty nice. And then we arrive at Augsburg, our first stop in Germany. And as no one told them, it's June. We've two nights here, so we've got plenty of time to explore. And explore we will. I created a full video of our time here and I'll pop up a link to that in the corner. But for now I'll give you a couple of glimpses of the highlight including the Golden Hall. Maximilianstrasse. And the Fuggery. We did have an excellent couple of days here, so do check out that video for more information. And from here we head on to Regensburg, but not before we stop at somewhere we really wanted to see. The Dachau Concentration Camp Memorial. Now we know this is going to be tough, but I'm not sure I was really prepared for how tough it would be. I was also in two minds of whether to include this in the video. But I think it's important that we look at history and we learn from it. If you want to skip it, then go to the timestamps below and then click on Regensburg. We enter through the Jewel House, the entrance to the camp, and you see that chilling sign. The first thing that takes you is the scale of the place, and this is the shadow of the former site. There is a really informative museum here that tells you the story of the rise of the Dachau concentration camp from 1933 until it was liberated in 1945. The vast majority of the camp fell into disrepair after the Second World War, but was restored to provide you with this memorial to the atrocities that happened here. Once again, the scale of it is horrifying, but when you learn that the camp was actually vastly overcrowded when it was liberated, it just brings the horrors home. And then I'm not sure there's anything that really prepares you for the horrors of when you come across the crematoriums and the gas chamber. It's important that the truth continues to be told and that we learn from this horrifying moment of history. As you could probably tell, our journey from Dachau to our next destination was fairly muted, but... It wasn't long before we arrived at Regensburg. Mm -hmm. 
once again we've got a couple of nights at Regensburg and so yep there's a full length video for this sand again I'll put up a link for that suffice to say it's a pretty city and certainly worth adding to your own itinerary and judging by the amount of restoration that was going on it's going to be looking stunning about now and don't miss the sausage kitchen you can literally follow your nose to it and now on to our next destination via the Nazi party rally grounds just outside Nuremberg and once again another fascinating museum that covered the period of the rise of the National Socialist Party. You need to allocate a few hours for your visit because this story starts with the humiliation of Germany after the First World War. It takes you right through to the fall of the National Socialist in 1945 and it covers the events in great detail and includes the horrors along the way. The Documentation Centre is built alongside the unfinished Congress Hall. The scale of it is truly epic. To be honest, we really love this living history, although the best views are actually seen from the park alongside it. Hitler deliberately chose this parkland to build his Congress Hall, but it's nice now to see it being returned to a leisure facility. A little further along from the lake, you come across the Zeppelin fields. This is where Hitler held some of his mass rallies. You know those black and white films where Hitler was whipping up the crowds to a mass frenzy? Well, it still stands. Now obviously if you've watched the footage you'll notice it's very different. The Nazi paraphernalia has been removed, including the large swastika across the centre. It's amazing that this piece of history still stands. As you ascend to the top, you can almost imagine the frenzy of the crowds. And overlooking the Zeppelin field, this is not the first time a shiver has been sent down a spine. Here we head on to our next stopover, Dinkelsbull, and I know I'm not saying that right. This pretty little Bavarian town was just what we needed after our visit to the Nazi party rally grounds. Once again we've got a full length video of our stop here, just check out the link in the corner. And after enjoying Dinkelsborough, it's on to another place I probably can't pronounce correctly, and that's Nordlingen. But I must say, along this stretch of the road, I passed a place called Hellenbach. Now come on, how many times have you said you've been to Hellenbach, and not really? Anyway, a quick look at Nordlingen. And it will be a quick look, because you've guessed it, there's another video on the town. And yep, the link is going to appear in the corner just about now. Another walled town that makes up part of Germany's romantic road. You know, the Romantic Strasse. And now on to our final destination, Heppenheim. The birthplace of one four-time world champion, Sebastian Vettel. But that's not before we check out the rather beautiful Miltenberg. 
Now I can't lie, it is a little grey, but that doesn't stop us exploring. Miltenberg sits on the River Main. That's the river that flows all the way up to Frankfurt before then joining the Rhine. It made an excellent place for a pit stop. That's a pit stop. And yeah, that's me on the right as well. It's a picture postcard destination. Even on a grey old day like today, full of Bavarian charm. And yes, we're still in Bavaria. In the very northwest of Bavaria, but yet yeah, we're still in Bavaria. So we hit the road again, and this really is now onto our final destination. Yep, and that sky is correct. Just as we're leaving Germany, they turn on the blue skies. Oh well, we only have the one evening in Heppenheim, so we're going to have to make it quick. So parked up and checked in, we head out to discover a little of Heppenheim. And we head to the centre of the old town, which in this case was Marketplatz. Now I really liked Heppenheim and I really wish we had more time to stay, but them's your breaks. So with that, that brings our Lakes and Lederhosen road trip to an end. And it's back on the road again for that journey home. I really hope you like what we put together here. And perhaps it inspires you to undertake a similar road trip. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and happy and safe travels.